Luke chapter 19 is where we're turning today. The New Testament, Luke chapter 19. How many of you admit that you like a good Bible story? I do. I remember being in vacation Bible school, and maybe you were restless at some point. None, I know none of you ever were. You were never the bad kid in VBS, of course. But, you know, there's parts of it you may have liked more than others, but when they would get into the story, if they could tell that story right, boy, you just felt like you were there. And so if you allow me this morning, I do this from time to time, I haven't done it in a long time, but I, I sometimes like to tell the Bible story a little bit more in that format. Now, I don't have flannel graph or, uh, you know, any kind of props or anything today, but I want us maybe if you, you say, well, I'm too old for that, well, pretend you're young because we're doing this. <laughs> and uh, I want to tell the story of Zacchaeus today. And I think there's some important things that we need to be reminded of. But we're first going to read the account from the scripture. Luke chapter 19, I'd invite you to stand with me for the reading of God's word. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm going to ask my wife if she would ask God's blessing on the reading of his word today. Learn something from this story in your word. Help it to be applied to our lives. Help us to serve you better. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Be with us the rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today we're being transported away from the corner of Covered Bridge and Creek Roads to a land far, far away and in another time. And as we open our eyes in this place, we're on a dusty street, We've been real, we realize that we're placed squarely in the middle of a Bible story. This place looks a lot different than home. There are people walking around in robes, I guess those are, and, and the houses, no, no vinyl siding, no aluminum siding, they look like they've been made with some kind of adobe bricks. And that thing you see going down the street is, is not a modern um, automobile, but it's, it's a donkey-drawn cart, so watch your step. Matter of fact, the street we're on right now is, is home to some of the most wealthy people in the city. It's definitely upper class. We're, and matter of fact, we're here on purpose. We're looking for one of those upper class people. He's rich. Wait a minute. There I see him. There he is. Zacchaeus, the tax collector general. He's leaving for work and it's not even seven o'clock yet. We look at him and he is dressed in whatever the finest business garb is of the time. He's got a close cut beard gracing his pointed jaw. But enough of that. It's obvious as we watch Zacchaeus that, that that he's in a hurry. His camel leather briefcase slaps against his legs as he jogs down the steps of his large house. I've got to go. I've got to get there, he mutters to himself. And we see him run down the sidewalk to his tax office. Matter of fact, we kind of snicker a little bit to ourselves. It's kind of funny to watch him go because his little legs are going so fast they're almost a blur. He dodges other people as they come walking the opposite way. Now, he hates tall people. He avoids them at all costs. He even charges them extra on their taxes. You see, Zacchaeus is short. But he isn't just short. He's really short. Like the kind of short that makes him have a booster seat in his big chair in the office. Short like the little old ladies tower over him and say, Sonny, could you help me pick up my cane? Short like sit on a curb and swing your legs kind of short. And Zacchaeus hates it. We see him now in our imaginations that he's arrived at his, his office building, and it's a rather handsome building with a, a government sign over the door. 
that reads Office of the Tax Collector General. That's Zacchaeus. He pulls out what looks like enough keys to unlock every door in Jericho. And after turning the correct key, he steps over the threshold. And as Zacchaeus, have you ever gotten to work and stepped into the office and just sort of this cloud comes over you? Oh, here we are again. That's what Zacchaeus is feeling. He thinks this week everything's going to be routine. He's got three assistants He'll be coming in about 15 minutes, and, and he already knows. If you have a workplace where there's a routine, you know how everyone's going to come into the workplace or the office, don't you? He already knows what's going to happen. Simon is going to come barreling through the door, his parchments flying from his briefcase, a fig bar in his hand. He's always like that, never late but pushing for time. And he'll sit down in the corner of the office and he's going to shove that fig bar in his mouth and start talking with his mouth full, which should be illegal and is probably a sin. Boss! I'm sick of how fast things are going these days. Time's flying. What's the world coming to? Did you hear? And all the time, pieces of the fig bar are flying out. Oh, Zacchaeus hated it. That man's mother was a failure when it came to table manners. Next, Eliakim would come, and it's total opposite. He would shuffle over to his side of the room with a nod of acknowledgement. and He was sort of meek and mild and quiet, but when he spoke, you'd better listen. Needless to say, the other one got on his nerves quite a bit. And then Josias would be the last one to arrive, and he was the optimist of the group. You know somebody like that, right? He would, his smile would light up the room, and he would open the door, and he would stand there for a second. He did this every day with the world's biggest, cheesiest grin on his face, and he would say, good morning, gentlemen. Today is a fine day to collect taxes. Oh... Zacchaeus, I can see him in my mind. He sighs and he thinks to himself, my life seems so empty. My day always starts the same. It always ends the same. I collect extra, extra taxes from tall people and people who complain about taxes. I sign papers and eviction notices and then I go home late at night and the next day begins sooner than I could ever want. My life has no purpose. Crash, Zacchaeus is startled. As Simon comes barreling through the front door, he's so excited and frazzled this morning that the door bounces off of the other side and, and, and just about breaks. He drops his briefcase and parchments go flying all over the room. Just as I thought, this day will be no different. No, it's exciting, boss. You won't believe who's coming to town. Who? Zacchaeus asked. But before Simon could answer, Eliakim comes crashing through the door, not meek and mild, but this time the door bounces off again, almost breaking off. Zacchaeus is floored. He can't believe what he has seen. This mild man is now busting through the door. Before he can get an explanation, there's the sound of some off-key singing. The door opens and there's Josias. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Was that good? That's him. What? Josias is coming to town? No, boss. Something's happening. There's a man named Jesus who's coming to town. Haven't you heard? No. Would you guys stop acting like fools and tell me what's going on? Jesus is a very famous prophet. Some say that he's the Messiah, the Son of God. He's a very articulate teacher. He tells lots of stories, and he's doing all kinds of miracles. One time he turned the water into wine. Another time he made a lame man walk again, and he cleansed a leper. He's even raised folks from the dead. It's amazing, boss. And I wonder, I know, again, we're, we're back in VBS this morning, okay? And I wonder, kids, if, if Zacchaeus... I wonder if he thought a goofy thought. Now, there's no evidence of this, but I, in my imagination, I wonder. The little Zacchaeus from his perch on his chair, I wonder, could this Jesus make a short man tall? Boss, you're daydreaming. Guys, you know what? I've decided to give you the day off. 
If Jesus is coming to town and you want to see him, go do what you would like to do. Well, you would have thought that he had told three schoolboys that recess time had come and I could see him as they leave, leave the fig bar and the, the briefcase and the papers and all that stuff and they go out the door and they're gone. Hey, wait for me. Oh, never mind, my legs are too short. I couldn't catch up anyways. And I see Zacchaeus as he makes his way and he finds... He hears where Jesus is going to be and he makes his way to the square. But his heart sinks and it doesn't have far to sink. His heart sinks when he sees the square because it's full of people. A massive crowd has gathered. Tall people are everywhere and he can't see a thing. There's no way he's going to get to see Jesus, much, act, much less actually talk to him. And disappointment must have flooded over him. And, and then I think something uh, of desperation kicked in. I must see Jesus. I must know. Can he take care of my problem? Can he make a short man tall? Suddenly he has an idea and he, he sees the trees lining the street. There. That one, he says. And he scrambles over to that big old sycamore tree. And you know, there's always one of those green save the earth environment trash cans at the base. And he crawls up on top of it. And he pulls himself. Oh, I should be doing more workouts at the Jericho gym. And he begins to climb. Each branch presents a new challenge. But there's determination in the little guy that says, I'm going to see Jesus. And finally, he reaches the place where he can see. Now, I want to stop the story there for a minute. The first thing we notice about Zacchaeus' friends, both in the scriptural account and in our VBS account this morning, is that he was a seeking sinner. Zacchaeus, we add these details because I want you to understand, we read the account in the scriptures we have, and we don't realize that Zacchaeus was a real person. He had real emotions. He had real thoughts. He had real feelings. He, he worked with people. He lived in a real house. He was as real as you and I are today. He faced the daily grind as we face it. He had a physical issue. And he also had the sin problem that is original to all of humanity. Yet when he heard about Jesus, there was something that compelled him to find Jesus. Now, I don't know from the scripture why he was looking to find Jesus. It could be that he was simply curious. It could be that Jesus... Jesus was famous and he had to find him. I don't know why it was. But I know for whatever reason, Zacchaeus was a seeking sinner. Matter of fact, he wasn't just a seeking sinner. He was desperate. When you're a man of his stature, pardon the pun, but when you're a man who holds that kind of position, it would be somewhat embarrassing to do what he did to be climbing a tree. And yet he gets to the point where that doesn't matter. Friends, in our world and maybe in this church this morning, we soon realize that there are people who are searching. Maybe you came to the service this morning. Maybe you're watching online today and you are searching for something. You are going through the daily grind. You are going with this hollowness and this emptiness and your life just seems so boring and bland and it just seems so hopeless and it seems like you can never uh, have any joy. You can never find any peace and there's just something wrong. We wonder why people constantly buy new things and seek new thrills and live a restless, unsettled life. Why do they spend hours at the local bar drinking away their money and their reputation and their body? Why do men and women go out and ruin their marriages and families for a one-night stand? Why? Why? Because of sin. They search and they search and they search, but they cannot find happiness in their search. Friends, this universal problem cannot be limited or stopped by human means. We look at reports of vandalism and robbery and kidnapping and we say, I would never do that. I just commit little sins. Well, if sin is ruling in your heart today, it's only by the grace of God. And you are in danger of doing who knows what if you do not seek Jesus today. Humanity is driven by this sin problem. And in the attempt to find a cure, to find a source of happiness... They end up digging deeper and deeper and deeper into the pit from which they will never be able to lift themselves. 
What's the answer to the sin problem? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You must find Jesus. I'm grateful to tell you, and we're getting ready to get back to the story. Not only was there a seeking sinner, but there was a looking Lord. Zacchaeus has been perched in the old sycamore for some time now. The crowd at the square has grown larger and larger. Now people are all gathered around the base of his sycamore tree. I can see him. He's clinging to that trunk. He doesn't want to be seen. There's one moment when a tall father boosted his little son to the lowest branch of the tree and the little urchin started climbing, but the father quickly snatched him back. And for that, Zacchaeus is grateful. The noise of the crowd has been substantial for some time, but suddenly it grew louder. Jesus must be coming, Zacchaeus thinks. And he squints, and he looks, and he strains, and he looks at the other end of the square, and sure enough, there's a man. There's a man who must be Jesus. There's about a dozen men or so walking with him. And Zacchaeus watches, and his mouth falls open as he sees a crippled man kind of flop himself, tumble out into the path. And Jesus stops, and he bends down, and he says a few words to him. And suddenly, that that cripple jumps up, and there's a noise from the crowd, and he begins running down the street. And Zacchaeus is watching this, and he wonders again, I wonder if this Jesus can make a short man tall. By this time, Jesus is to the perch, the spot where he's perched. He had hoped to talk to Jesus, but there was no hope as long as this crowd has their way. And Jesus steps closer and closer to the sycamore tree and then suddenly he stopped. What's he doing? Zacchaeus wonders. He didn't have to wait long for an answer. Jesus looks straight up into that tree, straight through the leaves, straight through the branches, and his eyes meet those of the little tax collector. Zacchaeus, he says. You talk about shock. Zacchaeus, mine race. He knows my name. Folks gasp as they look up into the tree. Look, Ma, there's a little man in the tree. And they begin to laugh. And Zacchaeus' face begins to burn with embarrassment. But Jesus speaks again and says, Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. I'm going to have dinner at your house today. Well, that little fellow needed no more urging. He scrambles down from the heights with astounding speed. He jumps down and people scatter. And he runs to Jesus. So which way to your house for supper? It's just a couple of streets over. Let's go. I'm hungry. And they walk side by side to his house. And you can hear the exclamations from the crowd. They had come to see Jesus. They were important. And here is this crooked, awful tax collector. And Jesus has left them. And he's going to his house. Doesn't he know what kind of man Zacchaeus is? Oh, yes, my friend. He knew what kind of man Zacchaeus was. And I have no doubt that he had come to Jericho with an appointment. And the appointment was with a man whom he did know his name. And he knew where he was. And he went to find him. Imagine that dinner conversation. Could it have gone like this? So who do you think I am? Jesus says, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm beginning to believe you're the Messiah, sir. And you could see, maybe Zacchaeus said, Jesus, I, I, uh, I uh, have a question for you. I, I've heard about you. And I saw you heal that lame man. I saw it. You, you can do anything. And Jesus, I, I don't know how to say this, but my life, people have made fun of me. I have been ridiculed because I'm so short. It has affected my life. Jesus, if you're as powerful as I think you are, can you, would you make a short man tall? And I don't know, but I would wonder if Jesus smiled at him. Sure, I could. I'm God, but that's not my will, Zacchaeus. You see, while I could make a short man tall, I'd much rather make a sinful heart clean. A sinful heart clean? Yes, Zach, you have a heart problem, not a height problem. I've created you the way you are. I like variety. But your issue is not your height. Your issue 
is your heart. It's blackened by the filth of sin. You and I both know the evil details of your soul. Oh, I see old Zacchaeus as he begins to tremble and shake. The weight of his sin is so real, standing in the presence of the Son of God. Lord, what can I do to be saved? I'll do anything to serve you. I'll give half my gift to the poor. If I've cheated people, I will give four times the amount in return. Jesus, I'm sorry. And I believe Jesus knew that he was sincere. And he looks at that man and says, Today, salvation is come to this house. And those of you that are saved can imagine what Zacchaeus felt like. You know what happened. The burden of sin rolled away. The burden of the guilt. The burden of the past. The shame of living a crooked life. All of that lifted from his shoulders. Jesus smiles and says to those around, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I believe... That Zacchaeus' life was so totally transformed after his encounter with Christ and in his subsequent actions that people may have been, get, been calling him the tallest man in Jericho. Now, you say, I don't know that all that happened. I don't know either. But I do know this. Zacchaeus was a real person with a real problem. And if he's like some of us, what he thought his problem was is not often what the problem really is. You see, we go, have you ever diagnosed yourself on Google? Don't do that. Don't, you know, we don't want to add you to the prayer list if you've been to Google for your doctor. And my wife is calling me out. We're going to ignore that. You've diagnosed yourself, right? And then you go to the doctor and find out it was something totally different. We tend to do that with our souls, don't we? We know the problem. Lord, if I could just have more money, if I could just have a different job, if I just look different, if I just, if I just. And and really, I think it's a trap of the enemy to get us focused on thinking that our problems are not a problem, that, that they're a different type of problem. There's a looking Lord who knows exactly what your issue is this morning. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Don't diagnose your own problems. Don't let your heart make the judgment calls. You will get it wrong. Let Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, pinpoint your problems. He knows where you are. He knows the sycamore tree that you're in today. He knows your name. And He has declared His mission statement. The Son of God is come to seek and to save that which is lost. In a world of over seven and a half billion people, my friend, he's looking for you. He sees you this morning. Oh, I know you're here at Beavertown Church or you're at home. I don't think anybody's live streaming from a tree. But he knows where your heart is. He knows if, like Brother Will mentioned before his song, if you've served him and then walked away. Maybe nobody else knows because you've kept up the exterior. Maybe you've never had the courage to come to Christ. You've never had the courage like Zacchaeus did, but but you know you're searching for something. I want to tell you, Jesus is who you are searching for. And he already knows where you're living. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have ever lasting life. We're standing together today, turning to number 346. I want to sing this hymn in closing. It's a prayer. It's a prayer that I no doubt, this is in the Sing to the Lord hymn, though, that no doubt would match the prayer of Zacchaeus. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble prayer. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. He will not pass you by. This morning I'm convinced God's presence has been here. 
God's been helping us. And I'm convinced there's probably someone or, or some ones in the crowd this morning who, who need to pray. You need to find Jesus. Jesus is looking for you. And, and, and it's as if today, through the Spirit of God, His eyes have met yours. And you realize He's called your name. He knows your sin. He knows your battle. He knows what you're facing. This morning, I want to invite you to come. We don't shame you for coming to the altar to pray. We, we, we want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to encourage you in your walk with God. The altar's open as we're singing number 346. exactly where you are. Come to him. Come to him and have your life transformed. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the example of Zacchaeus, the, the transformation that took place in his life. Help every person under the sound of my voice to know that that is possible for their situation, for their life, oh God. I pray now that you would dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Bring us back together this evening for Sunday school and for the evening service. We thank you so much for your presence today and we ask and we covet your presence in the services that are to come. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things and all God's people said, amen. Thank you so much for coming this morning. God bless you. You are dismissed.